Welcome everyone. Today we are unboxing my new Canon R8 camera. So I got this camera for making YouTube videos. Before we get on with the video, I just want to say a big thank you to all of you for watching, subscribing and giving my videos a thumbs up. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. So in this video, it's just a quick unboxing and a quick look around the camera. If you want to see more content on the camera, let me know in the comments section below. The reason I picked this because my first camera was a Canon M50. It broke after five years. Canon cameras are really easy to use. I was looking at a Sony camera. However, majority of videos I watched on Sony cameras here on YouTube, everyone talks about cinematic look. And to do the cinematic look, you record it in a log profile, which is a flat image. Even this camera has that, which I will not be using. I don't have time for that because you've got to record the video, take it into your editing software, then do color grading. I just want to record my video, put it in the editing software, edit the video and then get it out and share the information with you guys. I should also mention for me, the kit lens is fine. I may get a prime lens. However, if you are thinking about getting more lenses, this camera may not be worth it for you as this is a full frame camera and the lenses are really expensive. That's something to think about. Okay, let's get on with the unboxing. We have some paperwork here. Instruction booklet in different languages. Camera strap. Charger, LPE 17 battery. It's a good idea to get spare batteries. Power supply, of course mine is a three pin one because I'm in the UK. Kit lens. So this is the 24 to 50 millimeter kit lens. Autofocus control and manual focus. I'll leave you an autofocus. This lens does have image stabilization built in. So make sure you check that that's on. I'll remove the cup. That's the back part of the lens. The front. Of course, this lens does extend. That's all the way to 50 millimeters. That's the focus ring at the front. Onto the camera. This camera is light for a full frame camera. It weighs 414 grams without the battery and card. With the battery and SD card, it weighs 461 grams. If I just remove this cup. This has a 24.2 megapixel full frame sensor. A lot of people say this is the same sensor that the Canon R6 Mark II has, which is a thousand pounds more than this. See that red dot there? That's where you match up the red dot on the lens and would go on there. I should also mention this is an RF mount. You can use your old Canon EF and EFS class. EFS is for crop sensor cameras, so you will have to put the camera in crop sensor mode to use it with them lenses. If you use the EF lens, you're fine. I have EF 50mm lens. I need to buy an adapter. You could buy an original Canon adapter. I normally buy um, a Viltrox one. That's what I had for my N, uh, Canon M50. You put the adapter on and with that adapter, you can use uh, the EF class on this as well, which Canon have loads because RF class at the moment is really expensive. If you are in a low light situation, you will need faster lens, meaning the lower the number, the faster the lens, like 1.8 or 1.4. The advantage of having a full frame camera, they're good in low light because they have a bigger sensor. At the bottom, that's tripod mount. That's where the battery would go. We'll put that in now. That goes in like so. I have an SD card here. It sports a UHS-2 SD card, which is slightly expensive. 
This is from my Canon M50 64GB. It does not have to be a UHS-2. You can use UHS-1 like this one, which are cheaper because it's 128GB UH-1 card on Amazon right now is around 20, £22 or something. And the uh, UHS-2 one, 128GB is for £70. Uh, but you've got a good camera, no point cheaping out on the cards. I've always used Sandisk cards. My card's not here yet. I have ordered it, but it should be arriving soon. That would go in like so. Clicks into place. To remove it, we click it out. I'm explaining everything because I'm thinking if you're watching this video, you may be new. If you are advanced, then this video may not be for you. Some ports on the left side. That is a port for remote. We have two ports here. As you can see there, it says mic and headphone. I'll just remove this. So the mic one is the one I'll be using. And then under here, we have a type C port for power delivery. And then the micro HDMI port. I believe you can use this as a webcam as well. You don't need to install anything. You just plug it in and it will start working. I'm not 100% sure, but that's what I've heard. That's what it looks like from that side. On the top, we have the buttons. So my M50 did not have this. So this has got dedicated photo and video switch there. So you could toggle between both of them. At the back there, we have a little menu switch. This records 4K 60p and it's oversampled from a 6K sensor. So video quality should be really good. You can also record full HD at 180p, but that will not have sound. There's the different mode dials. So you've got M for manual where you control everything, whether you're in photo or video. And then you've got your other one, AV, TV, P. So if you ever need to update the firmware, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to check if the firmware needs updating. If it does, you need to put it on P. Go on to Canon's website, download the firmware onto your computer, put it into an SD card. You need to format your SD card first. Make sure you have removed any images from your SD card first, because if you format it, everything will get deleted. And then put the SD card in here, have your battery fully charged, put this in P mode, and then just follow the on-screen instructions and you will be able to update your firmware. So at the top here, we have a hot shoe, and this has some pins in there. So you could use a flash or Canon's own microphone. If you use their microphone, you do not need to use the mic port. We have a dial here, off, lock and on, record button, multifunction button, the dial there. These two here, that's where you would put the next strap, the more buttons here, autofocus on off, info button, trash can, play. There. It has an articulating screen. That's the main reason I went for the Canon M50 five years ago, because Sony were offering, theirs were facing upwards. They wasn't good for me. Articulating screen is the best for me. It falls back as well to set it up. It's a touch screen or you could use the uh, dials as well. So that's program mode. It gives you a little guide. Turn it again. You've got some creative filters. But that's something I will be using. Special scene. Hybrid auto. So this is like, you know, the iPhones do that. It would record a few seconds before it takes a picture. On new two cameras, this is what I did with my M50. Just leave it on auto and the camera will do everything for you. You will still get a good image quality. V stands for. P for program. TV that show priority. And you know that how you could stop the motion for motion blur. I'll leave it in manual. Okay, let's put the lens on. So I'll remove the cup from the back first. I don't want to get any dust on my sensor, so I always do this part really quickly. So I'm matching that red dot with that red dot on there, and then twist. There we go, the lens is on. If I turn the camera on as well. There we go. 
So we have to twist the lens for it to start working. So I'm in manual mode and I have the toggle on video so it's brought the information up. But now I'm going to push menu and this is where you set it up. So for the movie size you want, if I click on that, of course I'm in the UK so mine is PAL settings. If you're in USA or other countries where you want to use NTC settings, I think it's NTC, where you get 60 frames per second and 30 frames per second, you need to be in NTC. But because I put in the UK time and yet picked up London, mine's uh, already come up as that. So let's go to the wrench menu at the top. I can go through menus and if I keep pushing info, you can jump through the menus. So this is where I would go to the wrench menu. I'd go, this is where you would format your SD card. So I'm going to format SD card. It's very important when you put a new SD card in, always format the SD card. Go forward. There's the video settings. This is where you could change from PAL to NTSC is. So if you're in America or a different country and you want 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second, you need to be in NTSC. Power saving. So the screen will get dim after 10 seconds. And yeah, I'm disabling that. Screen off disable, auto power off 30 seconds. Disable that. So the firmware does indeed need updating because this is on firmware 1.0.0 and they have released a new firmware now which is 1.1.0. Camera has Canon's excellent dual pixel autofocus. This is dual pixel autofocus 2. So it's better than the one I had on the M50. Sony and Canon have the best autofocus. For me personally, I needed good autofocus and I needed a screen that can flip out. They were my two main requirements. 4K, 25 frames per second or 60 frames per second. It's nice to have, but it's not important, especially on YouTube because YouTube compressed the file anyway. You guys have given me so much support. So I thought it's only right I unbox this camera with you guys. Thank you so much for all your continued support. Give this video a like. And please subscribe. There are many more reviews to come. Thank you so much for all your support. I will see you in my next video.